G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Saturday evening here in Australia, Saturday morning over in the States and the markets are absolutely firing. But I thought I'd start off with a little tweet here. I put this out just the other day. If you hodled through the entire bear market without selling and are now in profit, you are officially a crypto OG. <laughs> and that's a fair call as well. If you have been able to make it through a bear cycle and haven't panicked and you know sold things that are lost, because that's what would happen to me. I bought really late in the uh, bull run in 2017. I was rich for, well, I wouldn't really say rich, but I turned $800 into about 4,200 in a matter of weeks. Uh, and in pretty much the same time, I turned it into, I think, about $300. <laughs> so uh, I can fluctuate quite a lot. But I didn't sell. And that $800 that I invested is now worth $1,800. So it was $800 Australian, and it's now worth about $1,800 US. So it took a long time, but I'm back in profit and kind of well up. And then I reinvested this year some more money as well. So you know there is money to be made and if you can make it through a bear market without selling uh, and come out the other end and in profit you've been through everything you've been through the ups and you've been through the downs you are an og doesn't mean you're the oldest person in crypto by no means but you can consider yourself an og you've been through a full cycle and i mean not even a full cycle i came in really late this is the beginnings of a bull market so I still like to think I'm a bit of an OG now after sort of three years in the space. All right, something I found uh, quite disappointing. Again, this is a different uh, exchange this time, but Polynex, Polynex Exchange goes down on the brink of new Bitcoin all-time high. If it's not Coinbase or uh, Bitfinex, uh, it's Polynex or Binance or someone's guaranteed to go down. I wish I could understand why. I wish I knew exactly what was going on that made them go down. I, I can only assume that they don't want all the Bitcoin to just disappear because <laughs> then it just becomes sort of too expensive and they can't keep selling. You know, I don't even know. I've got no idea. But another exchange goes down. Right as we're about to really start to soar, uh, everything just kind of gets put on a hold. So that's very disappointing. But this is really exciting. So Bitcoin shortage is real, 100% it is real, and it's there's getting less and less and less all the time. And PayPal is the cause, Pantera Capital claims. I read something, and I think it says down here, so we remember how much Grayscale was buying, and we remember how much um, MicroStrategy was buying. Well, now PayPal's here, and also Square Cash App, they're buying as well. PayPal's new crypto service, and this is just in America alone, it hasn't even gone worldwide yet, is already already having a huge impact, Pantera claims, adding that the payment merchant is snatching up roughly 70% of all the new Bitcoin in circulation. 70%. The, the miners are still selling it, and obviously, you know, there's certain people who've been in it for a long time that are selling for a profit as well. We are going to run out of Bitcoin very, very shortly. It is going to really start to push the price super, super high. It's going to become in such demand. And we heard about Sky Ridge just the other day. They were applying with the SEC uh, to you know, be able to invest into cryptocurrencies. And I'm sure they've probably been passed and are buying it right now. But that means they're buying it at around $18,700. So we'll refresh this. Let's see this. $538 billion and eighteen seven. This is only a few minutes old, not too old. Well, still roughly the same. There we go. So not much change, but still, this just keeps creeping up. Look at that over seven days. It went up, leveled out. It's going up again. Uh, gas, good. Good to see it coming down. Uh, BTC dominance has actually fallen. It's because the altcoins are really starting to pump at the moment. Uh, this is going to be another little sort of altcoin you know mini season i'm quite sure of it we need gas prices to come down a little bit more let's have a look what's really been moving omg that's on quite a quite a rip tear oh my god i didn't even look xrp was like 33 34 cents this morning when i looked at it last so now it's at 37 cents it is absolutely flying look at that uh, that is some you know near parabolic stuff right there. It's up 40% in the last seven days. For all those people who are hating on XRP and it said it was never going to make it and it's a shit coin and this and that, 
anyone who's uh, invested in XRP is feeling quite happy right now, and I'm one of those people. Uh, I can't wait to see what it can do, and particularly if it gets regulation, if it gets deemed not a security, and you know all the banks and all that start to use it, then you know even better. Stellar's been doing really well. I bought some Stellar this morning. Uh, I bought a few things this morning. We'll have to wait and see whether it was the wrong time. I'm sure there'll be a correction. But anyway, they're still uh, down from where they were earlier uh, in the year. Uh, not so much earlier in the year, you know, only about a month or two ago, most of these uh, were up a lot higher, not XRP, that was down. But Stellar uh, was higher and then it came down and now it started to find its way back up again. Uh, I think I was originally buying it for around sort of six cents, I think five or six cents. Bought something at eight cents, I think it got up to around 10 or 11 cents and uh, has pulled back and now it's down to nine cents. So still gone up a lot, but I don't think it's quite as high. Algorand doing well. Uh, I might have to look at getting some more Algorand. I did buy some more Kyber Network this morning. Uh, I, I love that, you know, it returns you in ETH. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't get astronomical returns in ETH, but it's still pretty good. It's better than nothing. So you buy it for a dollar and, yeah, it pays you back uh, in Ethereum. Now, Crypto.com, I'm guessing it's found its bottom. It's, yeah, look at that. It's really started to find its way back up. So I thought it was dead in the water, but there you go. What about losses? Is there any big losses that are happening at the moment? There are. Are they? But again, they've been on quite a tear. So, you know. What can you do? Yearn Finance, again, to be expected, uh, the amount it's pumped, but it's still sort of making its way back up. Uniswap a little, but really, these are all single digit losses. So I'm not really too concerned about those. But what I am concerned by is when you look at some of these charts, how parabolic they're sort of moving at the moment. And this Fear and Greed Index, it is quite high. Now look, that doesn't mean we're gonna crash anytime soon but it is more than likely. Again, not guaranteed, it's just more likely, but that doesn't mean it has to happen. Again, we heard about Skybridge the other day just getting in, PayPal, you know, they're buying up 70% of all the Bitcoin and it's only the Americans and the very early Americans getting into it. There's more of America to go, there's still the world to go. This could just go on an unbelievable run for quite some time, uh, you know. I'm still thinking a correction is going to come sooner rather than later, but I just, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think there's going to be any kind of heavy corrections. We could have a bit of a correction tomorrow, you know, 5, 10, 15% or something like that, entirely possible. We could have a 20, 30% correction tomorrow. Look, that's possible as well. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think we need to wait until about twenty-five dollars to $35,000 per Bitcoin before we see any kind of heavy retracements. Again, those 30, 40% corrections. But that's just my opinion. We'll have to wait and see. Now, let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. This is what has me not scared and not even worried, but I just know when things run like this, there's generally going to be a pullback. But if we get the marker out, and let's say we make the all-time high, we come back down to 30,000. That's a th uh, 13, sort of thousand, 14,000. That's a 30% correction right there. So that's entirely possible. Uh, and really, that wouldn't be so bad. Don't get me wrong, it's going to hurt, and particularly anyone who's bought some Bitcoin up and around here. But look, in the long-term grand, sc grand scheme of things, uh, it's not going to make every any difference. But that is something that we need to just at least consider. It's possible uh, and, you know, probably a little bit more likely than unlikely. But again, with all the news about, you know, again, Grayscale were buying Bitcoin only maybe a few days ago, a week ago. PayPal is, uh, they have to continue to buy. If people keep wanting to buy more Bitcoin, it doesn't matter what the price is for them. They just buy more of it. Same with Square, Square Cash App and Bitcoin uh PayPal is not even delivering cryptocurrencies to the world market yet. It is still just American based. Imagine what it's going to be like when they include the rest of the world. I am very interested to see what's going to happen to Bitcoin. I, I shudder to think what the price might be by the end of this bull run because the, the retail FOMO hasn't even started and that is where the really big money is. I know they talk about you know hedge funds with billions of dollars they don't have the same kind of money that the world has. You know, the everyday Joes, me and you that just have, you know, I put in $50, $100 here, $1,000 there, and you know, there's how many billion people 
uh, in the world that are probably going to throw a couple of dollars uh, each into it. And, you know, some won't put any, but others will put a whole lot more. You know, that goes into the trillions of dollars then that could be put into uh, Bitcoin and other coins as well. I mean, you know, we go back here. Let's have a look. Litecoin has been on a tear as well. We've got to find Litecoin. It's made its way back up, so it's overtaken Bitcoin Cash, and so has Polkadot. Very nice. I got myself some Polkadot today as well. So today I got Synthetics Network. I got Polkadot. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, I can't even remember now. I'll have to go back and look. I'm just so excited by how everything's doing at the moment. But that is what also worries me as well, because I'm so excited, and I know everyone else is getting... A little bit euphoric, uh, particularly with my XRP holdings. Uh, very excited. There's probably going to be a pullback and a significant one at some stage. Well, not probably. There absolutely will be a significant pullback at some stage. It's just whether we're near it yet. Again, my gut feeling is, uh, well, at least it was before. I don't see any significant pullbacks until kind of twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollar Bitcoin. I still think that's probably in play. Uh, it's just hard to know. And again, you know, PayPal, Litecoin, I think will just keep uh, going up. I think it's got a long way to go. People are going to get into the PayPal app and go, oh, there's Bitcoin for, you know, $18,000. I can't even buy a whole one. There's Ethereum for $500. If I don't have 500, I can't buy a whole one of that. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, 270. Uh, maybe I've only got $300 to invest. Uh, maybe I'll just go sort of three Litecoin. Uh, three and a bit Litecoin. And that's just the human psyche, the human psychology. That's what they'll do. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad investment. Uh, I like Litecoin. I got myself a bag and I'm quite happy with how it's doing. Uh, and it'll be the same with XRP and I'm not ragging on XRP either. But people who don't have the thousands of dollars to invest, they are going to put the money into the smaller caps because they are just going to think, imagine if one XRP becomes the price of one Bitcoin. And look, there's people out there, you know, conspiracy theorists who believe it could do something uh, similar, not quite similar. I mean, I've heard about one XRP being $10,000, but I mean, imagine buying something at 40 cents and it turns into a $10,000 coin. Not saying it will. I, I am very skeptical about whether XRP could hit that price target, maybe ever, but at least in the near future, I think there's very little chance. Uh, and I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter about it. Let's just get past $3.81 which was the all-time high back in 2017. And then we can start to see where it might go from there. But, you know, it's still basically a 10x for us to just get back to its all-time high. So we've got a ways to go. But, you know, XRP at $10, $20, $30. Look, it's possible. Uh, it is quite possible. But, yeah, time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, you know, $30, that's 100x from here. Uh yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Who knows? But yeah, things are just looking very bullish. I mean, it's just green across the board. Green, green, there we go. There's our first red down to CDI, number 18. Uh, Crypto.com just pulling back in the last hour, but it'll probably pump up some more. It is just a sea of green everywhere, and it is a great time to be in crypto. Just buyer beware. If you understand the fundamentals of cryptocurrency, you're in it for the long haul. My personal opinion is it won't really matter what you buy as long as it's a reasonable coin in props, you know, kind of the top 100, even that can be a bit dicey, but more kind of the top 10, uh, I'd be pretty confident, confident in. I think you'll be fine, but just understand that it could take, uh, you know, a reasonable retracement in the very near future. Maybe tomorrow you get in a Litecoin at $83 today, you might wake up and tomorrow it's back down to something like $65. Uh, that is entirely possible. But long term, six months from now, maybe even 12 months from now, uh, I think you'll be sitting pretty, but not financial advice, just my personal opinion. And as I say, uh, you know, you need to understand the markets and how they work and understand that if you're in it for super long term, uh, then it won't really matter. You know, if you're investing for the next 10 years, uh, definitely Bitcoin is where you, uh, my personal opinion, I'd be looking and Ethereum. Uh, Litecoin, it's been around for a while, so uh, definitely could be. And now that it's been sort of regulated and banks can take custody of it and PayPal are selling it, I think it will be around for the long term. I don't think it's going anywhere. Polkadot uh, is my sort of wild card. Same with Cardano. Again, really anything in the top 10, you know, maybe even Bitcoin Cash. I mean, I just, 
I'm, I'm worried about Bitcoin Cash, but it has been regulated and PayPal is offering it. So it's entirely possible. And look, a number of the DeFi coins, I think, uh, have a good chance of being around long term. Synthetics Network, I'm super bullish on that. Aave, you know, possibly even Ren Protocol, Carva. Yeah, ton of really good coins out there. And, you know, again, personal opinion, not financial advice. I think we're still very early in the piece and there is massive upside to go. I mean, you know, if Bitcoin, let's say Bitcoin makes it to $250,000. Look, it could go higher. I'm not sure it will. I'm not sure it'll even make it to 250000 But let's just say Bitcoin makes it to 250000 I don't think it would be a stretch to think Ethereum might be five to ten to fifteen thousand dollars a coin. Uh, it's possible. XRP, you know, ten, twenty, thirty dollars a coin. Uh, you know, possible. Uh, I'm not saying it will. Chainlink, I mean, you know, a good couple of hundred dollars because the money pouring into Bitcoin will just naturally drag everything up. People will get into Bitcoin, they'll get comfortable with that, and then they'll want to chase all these other coins thinking that they're going to be able to do the same and become worth the same amount as Bitcoin. So the money to get Bitcoin to 250000 means that a ton of money has first gone into this and then poured into the altcoins. So the altcoins could do things that are just, you know, it's that old saying, it's literally going to melt people's faces off. And before getting into crypto, uh, I would never have believed this stuff could have happened. If someone had said to me, oh, this coin, you know, you're going to buy it for $5 and sell it for $200, you know, in 12 months time, I would have said, you are kidding. You know, you're dreaming. It's a total scam. Uh, look, it happens. It 100% happens. Bitcoin in a matter of 11 years has gone from, you know, pennies to now nearly $20,000. Uh, and it's probably still got a long way to go. And that means all of these have probably still got a long way to go. Doesn't mean they're going to last forever. Please don't get me wrong. I am not saying they're going to last forever, although I am, you know, I have my personal opinion. I think Ethereum is here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think XRP will be here to stay and I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it'll get its regulation. I do think it will be used for cross-border payments. Uh, you know, the whole green energy thing, it's already been mined. There's no more uh, environmental impacts to it, which Bitcoin does have. And I'm not hating on Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. I think it's going to be around, but it uses a lot of energy. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's a ton of projects. Uh, again, I think there's still space for Cardano and Polkadot. It's not going to be just, you know, Ethereum and that's it. It's like saying that, you know, in computers, Apple, that's it. No, there's Dell and Samsung and, you know, all these other things. There is going to be a place for everyone, but there's always going to be one who was really at the top. And I saw something before, I can't remember who said it, but Ethereum is kind of like Google. I think it will be the Google of, uh, you know, Web.3 and all the rest of it. So the upside for Ethereum, uh, I think is really, really big. And I'm, I'm glad I have a position in Ethereum. And I mean, I, I saw something from BitBoy talking about Ethereum, you know, could possibly go to $50,000 if Bitcoin, you know, went to, you know, 300,000 or something like that. Imagine you had an, a node 32 Ethereum and each one was worth $50,000. I mean, look, just $5,000 uh, times 32 is bloody amazing. But yeah, 50,000, again, that is the type of stuff that will melt people's faces off. And someone else uh, said, I can't remember who, but Ethereum is like the early days of Bitcoin. I think it might have been, oh, what's his name? DIY Investing. I think I watched him. Uh, and he said, you know, Bitcoin again went from pennies to 20,000. Ethereum. Uh, came in late 2015 so it's still like seven years behind bitcoin you know what i mean uh and well at least a number of years you know six or seven years behind so imagine what it could do you know the mind boggles ladies and gentlemen the mind boggles anyway i'm not going to take up any more of your time it is saturday night here in australia uh, i want to go and enjoy some time uh, with my daughter watch some movies and you know kick back and relax what I want you to do is hit that like button down below. I'm really trying to get my videos put out. I do put out videos every day. There may be the odd occasion where I don't. Again, I've got a life, I've got a daughter, I've got a, uh, a regular job as well, but I do my best to bring material to you. And there wasn't a whole lot of news again, disappointing about the Polynex. Another exchange goes down and is really holding it up. But the shortage is real, it's happening. If you have an opportunity to buy some Bitcoin now, 
Oh, I mean, I can only tell you what I would do, and I have. I've bought some Bitcoin, uh, and I bought it months ago, and I'm still dollar cost averaging in, but I'm really more focusing on Polkadot at the moment for my dollar cost averaging. Also, Cosmos. I want to build a bigger position in Cosmos. Uh, Stellar Lumens, uh, some things, uh, and also most likely Synthetics Network. I'll still buy a few here and there, but they've really started to pump up. I'm just more looking for some of the coins that I've invested in that haven't done really well yet. Uh, Digibyte, I invested and I'm down 30%, so I may put some more into Digibyte. I still like Digibyte. I was just unlucky and I bought at the cycle high there. Uh, I still think it's going to have its time and pump. Dogecoin, and don't get me wrong, I don't believe in Dogecoin, uh, but I did invest in Dogecoin earlier and it pumped up and I basically doubled my money. I didn't have that much in, but I doubled my money, took it out and put it into some other stuff. So I may go looking for those kind of swing trades, although Doge has pumped a little bit already. I'll probably wait for um, a big pullback. I got some spare cash on the sidelines ready to go and buy into some more positions, more on kind of swing trades. Again, once we have that really big you know, 20, 30, 40% uh, retracement from Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and everything else will follow, I'll probably look to build some positions uh, in my altcoins because I already have the positions that I need in Ethereum and Bitcoin and I will dollar cost average a little bit into them. All right, yes, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that gain train at the moment and I'll see you next time.